Hi YouTube, uh, I'm going to give you a guide to doing Genesis M10. In particular, we're going to be looking at the tanking aspect of it, but I'll be talking more generally about how we approach each individual section of the run as well. So you can look at this from both a perspective of how do you do M10 and how do you do it as a tank. I'll give you both of those perspectives. I'll also tell you how we do it in a speed run fashion. Uh, uh, we've just got our score down to under 16 minutes at the moment, so 15xx something. Uh, which is a pretty good run at the moment on Genesis. It depends on what mutations you have, of course. I think fire is probably a little bit easier. It depends on particular circumstances and what you want to do on the caretaker boss as well. Um, so there's a couple of options for you there. But as always, if you like this video, please make sure you drop a like and subscribe. It really helps me out desperately trying to get to 3K followers by the end of the month. I'm going to have to smash the uploads to get there. But I'm hoping that you, with your help, I can do it. And as always, uh, I stream New World four days a week, loads and loads of war content, OPR content, and at the moment trying my solo Tempest runs. Got to Isabella on 35%, so make sure you tune in to see that. Twitch link is in the description below, but otherwise, let's get into it. Okay, and then importantly, make sure you pop your, at the very least, powerful Angry Earth coatings on. I normally run infused Angry Earth coatings on. Um, and gemstone dust is really important here. Gemstone dust much better than fire absorption potions or angry earth ward potions because um, the gemstone dust will protect you from the fire. So if you know you're going to come into a point where there's a big fire pit, popping a gemstone dust is the way to go. Um, but you can see we're starting off the run here. And actually what we do here is a strat where we I actually bypass this first hive. Um, I try not to take this, I try not to touch this hive at all. And I go straight for the archer. My team are good enough to handle that without a tank. You see their shield and shower across there. And at this point here, I try to get aggro. Now, what I want to do, I, this is actually a really, really bad example. What I should do is I should go to the right of the archer. And the reason I should go to the right of the archer here is because the archer archer jumps backwards from where you are. So what ends up here is you see here the archer jumps backwards into the soldier, which is really bad because we're trying to leave the soldier. You don't have to kill this soldier at all. There's no reason to kill the soldier. It doesn't affect your score. You'll get gold if you're good enough as well. So now we kind of forced to have to take the shirt. This this shirt. There, we're forced to have to take the soldier. So what's much better off doing there is if you go the other side from where I went on the archer, you'll actually be able to kill the archer without aggroing this guy at all. It costs us a little bit of time, but these are the optimizations. If you look, if you're looking to get under a 16 minute run, that's the optimizations that you have to be doing there, which is fine. My team can handle that. I'll take the soldier. If you notice, the soldier pops. A kind of defiance dance of his own. You can see he's got that fortified thing above his head there, which is why I do so little damage. And that's why nullifying oblivion on your void gauntlet is so key in this dungeon, because you can actually just nullify this guy's fortify whatsoever. Just drop an oblivion on him, he'll lose all of it, and you'll be able to do big DPS pretty quickly. Um, lots of my team run ice pylons just for a little bit of extra damage. We find that's quite successful as well. But you can see here, we're just going to wipe this guy pretty effectively. The healer doing a good job there. As I say, we've got couple of spears in the mix as well actually rather than just the one spear and that's because spear is just so good at single target dps with perforate and skewer uh, and invault kick for almost 100 percent uptime on those abilities as well but we kind of run in here you can see we don't worry about the fire pit we try to try and get rid of that i run straight in and if you're a good enough tank here you don't actually have to have your short sword and shield out most of the time so i have it now but actually what i can do is um I'm going to start to do it now, is get my hatchet out. This is a bad example. I get hit a couple of times. Once you know this guy's attack pattern, you can you can absolutely just dodge through all of his attacks. So it's kind of hatchet, 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 dodge, hatchet, 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 dodge. And with that, you get a lot more DPS for your team, and that's ultimately a faster run. Now, you do what you're more comfortable with. If you're not comfortable doing that, just play it slow and steady and use your sword and shield. Get your sword and shield out. Keep your shield up. The guy doesn't do incredible stamina damage. It's quite easy to mitigate, especially if your team has an oblivion up. You can see here that's going absolutely fine. And the reason why hatchet is so important as well is because slash damage that the hatchet provides is very strong against angry earth. So the hatchet does incredible amounts of damage. Now your sword and shield actually does two different types of damages. It does a kind of a slash damage on the light attacks. Does thrust damage on the heavy attacks, and your shield does strike damage. So it does lots of different things, and you can use that to your ability in dungeons, but here light attacks are much better than heavy attacks. I'll only really heavy attack if I'm trying to deplete the person's stamina, which is relevant sometimes in this dungeon as well, because just like on that last mini boss there, you can see it takes a knee in several instances, and that's because we've managed to deplete the stamina. Um, so we're just going to run and DPS this guy here. You can actually skip the rest of these mobs. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll, we'll get his aggro and we'll pull him up the stairs before we do this, but he was in a pretty good position right here. We'll hug the right side of the wall here. That's really important to make sure you don't pull any more aggro. And here it's kind of worth, it's quite useful to pop a gemstone dust. 
I don't actually know if I do it here, but we kind of pull all of these mobs. And these mobs are on explosive, so they're gonna you're gonna get a substantial number of people that explode. I pop my taunt so I can get them all. The healer's already got a sacred ground on me. That's really important to get you keep your tank up here. And you can just see we can wipe them all, and I can tank the explosions with my shield or a dodge through, which is quite nice as well. I think I actually get hit here. I managed to dodge through it quite nice. And that's how you deal with all of those mobs pretty quickly. And that's a really nice way because then you don't have to fight this mini boss with a ton of mobs. You can get rid of the mobs before you hit the mini boss. So then we go up to the mini boss. It's worth noting that the mini boss here is vampiric with my modifier on. So what I probably could do a bit better here is I could make sure I pop my infected throw. The infected throw will put disease on this mini boss and make sure that their vampiric is not as, eff as effective. But a lot of my team already have putrefying screams, so I know that they're applying substantial amounts of disease as well. On these enemies which just reduces the impact of the vampiric modifier and is really really important next we move down into the tree planting section what we'll do here is we'll just spend some time getting rid of the ads before we make a start and i'm a big advocate of kiting some of this stuff or dodging through eye framing especially if you're a good tank and you run the dungeon enough which at m10 you probably should have done by now you probably know that you can eye frame for a lot of the attacks here and that's quite important you can see here we're planting the seed I actually think this is the toughest part of the entire run, if I'm being honest with you, because it can go wrong if you don't manage to pull aggro or if you have a grab world to keep them off the tree, the Azov tree. And then the Azov tree can go down. It's happened one or two times in all of my M10s I've done in this dungeon, which is a substantial amount. But in reality, you just want to avoid that if you possibly can. So again here, trying to get aggro. It's unfortunate because the mobs are kind of spread and I don't like my team suffering too much, but I run and use my secondary taunt then, my berserk. And then I can just shield up here. Now I'm looking at my cooldowns. I can see I've got three seconds on my reverse stab, which is fine. I use my shield bash just to keep it, and then I'll reverse stab on the group. Reverse stab so effective because on this skill tree, you have grit on the attack, which means you can tank through all of their attacks and not get staggered. Make sure you do it to get the cooldown reduction. If you hit four mobs with it, it's 100% cooldown reduction on your defiant stance. Three mobs is really good because it's 75% cooldown reduction. It means you're going to get your cooldown reduction on your defiant stance back before the old taunt expires. Really, really nice gameplay there. Um, someone gets quite a nice drop that we're just having a look at here, waiting, and this is absolutely fine. A couple of mobs come out. You see, I'm waiting. I don't want to use my taunt too early. I want to make sure I get maximum impact of it. And then my job as the tank is to kind of lead them away a little bit. I see here I'm taking a little bit of damage. I get the archer in the back, which is not ideal, but the stance will keep me healed. Defiant stance heals me for about 5k. Shield up at this point, because that guy with the hammer, that vampiric, that Genesis soldier, sorry, he does a massive amount of damage when he does that when he does that slam attack with his warhammer. It's not too bad, but that attack right there is really significant. So I just play it safe and keep my shield up. You can play it as aggressively as the situation allows you to. But we'll do the wipes here. This is absolutely fine. That spin attack is just a bit annoying. You can kind of kite away from that as well, but it's not too big deal. You can see here the kind of the play style of the team is for me to hold three quarters maybe of the mobs and let my dps focus on the other mobs dps can focus mobs so much more effectively when there's only one or two spare and you can hold the rest and you don't need to hold all of the mobs here because sometimes making a big clump makes it a bit more dangerous for your dps because they can get burned down really quickly it's actually better to let your tank hold about 70 80 percent of the mobs and let your dps focus on the rest because they can just kill those so quickly especially with a lot of the, with the healer looking at it and a good tank will actually allow their healer to heal the other DPS because with your sword and shield, you shouldn't be taking too much damage. And I'll tell my healer at this point, hey, you don't need to heal me. You should be going and heal, healing the DPSs here. You can see here I'm low. So when I get low, I just pop the shield out. You see the Defiant Stance gave me four and a half there. That was plenty of healing. And then the healer comes in clutch with the nice one. Apply the Rend and throw an infected throw when I can. And we burn that down quite nicely. That's a nice little illustration. We loot the chests on the way here. This isn't particularly a good speed run that we're trying to do here. We were just needed some shards. So we loot the chests on the way. But if you're going for a speed run strat, then you absolutely should be leaving all of the chests until the end of the run. And that's clear. Once you've killed the final boss, you can run back through the whole dungeon and, and, and get to these chests. That's absolutely not a problem at all. Um, but that's the way you can shave off probably another minute of your time by just making sure that you leave the chests en route. So this section here is kind of a bit iffy so what we're trying to do is trying to hug the right hand side because on the left hand side is a hive there now in our experience about 20 percent of the time even if you hug all the way to the right you'll get aggro from these guys which is a bit unfortunate it, kind of, it feels like it depends a bit on their positioning which is which is a bit of a pain see my friend then got the best earring you can possibly get from this dungeon for a dex user so we jump over here we manage not to pull aggro which is nice we can leave those mobs behind and we go straight for taxi 
Yeah, um, yeah, patch it out here. I'm just doing nice fire. big damage. The healer pops yeah, to sacred ground. I think, did I get lucky with a defy death there? Don't know, but either way, it's time for me to tank up. It's getting a bit risky at this point. Nice and quick death. Burn him down, and we move on. Really nice and effective. The oblivion and the heal and the sacred ground combination. Really nice there, just to make sure everyone stays alive. Now we're going to leave this guy here. He won't follow you too much, or if he does follow you. Um, he can group up with the rest of the mobs that we deal with in a minute. Unfortunately, he roots me That's on the way. To me, then. I've never crafted anything There's a guy here that we you can actually avoid. I always craft things if you hug them. the left side of the wall here, I don't know if I manage it or not. Let's see. Yes, we do manage to avoid him. You hug that left-hand side, he completely ignores you. Then we'll just take the mobs up at the top. The only one to really worry about too much is the archer. He's a real pain. He does big damage. I can actually leave the two little guys yeah, to use my DPS. They can kind of solo those. The important thing here is holding the archer's um, aggro because he can do big damage, especially when he backstabs people. I think I get a call to maybe help out a little bit up here. So, yeah, you can see he goes down pretty quickly. So I come and help out and take these guys aggro. That's absolutely fine. My friends have killed the archer in the meantime. And now we're running to Caretaker. Now, Caretaker, there's two or three ways you can do this. This, this run, the reason I picked this run out of all the runs to you is because one, we tried to use a, a glitch to basically try and get make the run faster, which is the current speed run strat for this dungeon. But it doesn't actually work. It's not always successful. And then we have to revert to the standard strat. So I'm going to be able to ex I'm going to be able to explain all of those to you. Um, what you can do here is, and this is about to get patched, and I think if this hasn't been patched already, it's about to get patched. So this might not even work much longer. But anyway, you're going to see the standard run as well. You used to be able to lure the caretaker here. Basically, he would backward jumps into the wall, and from that aspect, then you can just leave him. He'll die in about 20 seconds. Um, in our experience, he tended to, to jump only when his health was a little bit low. I don't know how accurate that was, but you can see here you could just kind of body block him. Now, what you also can do is without having to have him backed into the wall here, you can surround him in a circle or body block him, and he won't be able to move back to where he wants to. So basically... What you do is you just stand in a circle, keep left clicking until he gets quite low, and then you'll see his his kind of attitude change, and he wants to get back to the middle for that phase. But as long as you're all body blocking him, he can't. And it's quite nice just to block at that point if you're not certain, because sometimes if you left click, it will move you out of position. Just hold him, and once that phase passes, you can go back to left clicking him again, and he'll stay there. Unfortunately, he manages to get out of our body block. So at this point, I need to run in. We tell the DPS or the DPS get out. Now, if you look above the if you look above the boss here, yellow stamina bar appears at this point. Now, to get that yellow stamina bar down, you need to heavy attack. Normally, with a hatchet, it can be three heavy attacks and then a quick throw, like an infected throw or random throw is even quicker. If you have berserk, it's only two. So I managed to get this. if you don't get the if you don't get the stamina down at that point, it's a full wipe. So it's your job as tank to be able to do that. Now, the warhammer is the best, but you look, you saw how easy it was to do with the hatchet. It's really not a problem. Just stand there, keep fully holding heavy attack and eventually you'll get it down and then light attack right at the end or the rending throw um he's got a couple of attacks in here he'll do that kind of breath attack where the swarm of like flies come out and they'll damage you that's very easy to kite we'll kind of run around here he'll do that long extending arm attack which is easy to dodge as well and later on he'll have this wave attack that you're seeing now the wave attack is the big killer one if you see the wave attack coming in this phase what you need to do is call out for the rest of your team because they might not see the wave attack if they're DPSing and they're not looking at the boss because you're holding the boss aggro, they get hit with that wave right in the back and it does mega damage. So you want to definitely call out wave attack coming so that they can turn around quickly and try and do something about it. Um, but at this point here, you see, I try and hold the boss aggro while my friends deal with the little mobs. And that's the best way of doing it. Because as long as I've got the little mobs, they can deal with the little, they can deal with, sorry, as long as I've got the boss, they can deal with the little mobs. Um, we're back to kind of the ordinary strat here, so we're just DPSing. It's fine, even though I'm in the flies, I've got enough healing from my healer. Um, I think we talk about trying to get him back in the wall, but one of the guys goes down, so they do a they do a revive. I get the aggro again. We're quite happy. I think at this point we probably say we're going to body black body block strat. You can see it here. We're not getting him into the wall here. We're just trying to surround him. I'm not sure how effective this is. We'll find out in a moment. This is exactly what I'm talking about. And this kind of nice diamond shape or kind of pentagon shape, moreover, because there's five of us. And just keep left clicking. You can see here the boss is trying to get back to the phase here, but he actually can't move, which is nice speed run strat. At this point, he will dive under. OK, so you have to watch the dive under part. You can actually block the damage from the dive, um, even if you're a melee DPS just with block. 
It will kind of exhaust your stamina, but it's enough to give you a get out of jail free card if you can't dodge, for instance, because you've got less than I, I don't know. You, you, you for one reason or another, you, don't, you can't dodge in time. You can actually just block it. Um, watch out for the trail he leaves. That leaves you subject to blight, but in reality, it's not too bad. And at this point of the phase here, you just kind of keep on left clicking. You'll burn him down nice and easy. Watch out for the waves again. They're the big things to worry about. Nice. So he's dead. We'll move on to the next room. We'll loot the chest here. Um, in mutation, particularly in mutation 10, um, you get a lot more legendaries. It almost feels like you get a legendary from every chest, and not that chest. <clears throat> but four out of five chests will be a legendary, which is quite a nice way to farm some gold as well. If you're looking to farm some gold, you can actually get some pretty bis items just by happenstance. You will have to run a number of dungeons, of course, before you get those. Um, but your friends here, they'll need to get the they'll need to get the torch so you can burn that. Now, normally the old strat is you used to run into this room and kill the hive and kill the boss. Actually, you can probably leave these guys on the left as long as you can pull this mini boss up without attack, attack attracting the rest of the aggro, which you manage to do. If you don't keep DPSing him, he will run back. So you can see here we end up pulling one extra. Sometimes that happens, but that's fine. It's better than three extras. And we'll just end up killing the boss here pretty quickly. At this point, one of my friends has already gone to drag the other boss. So there's another mini boss over here. You can see here Galena had already gone to drag him in. We'll drag him in here. This is fine. Now, what you want to do ideally is if you can get him in that left corner there that he runs into, which is quite difficult to do, but if you can get him there, you can kind of stick him there and he'll have, find it really hard to Beyblade around and you can just left click and kill him nice and quickly. This guy, Kotomos, is really annoying because the Beyblade attacks means he does move a lot and he's quite unpredictable ta to tank as well. So I just find getting him down as quickly as possible is the key. A nice sacred ground will be able to make sure you can mitigate most of the stuff as well and a nice clutch he heal from my healer there. So we pick that up. And what we do now is there's another mini boss on the absolute opposite side of the room. We're not interested in that. We're just going to, we, at this point, we don't even need the mobs because we're so fast on time that we're going to make sure we get gold anyway. So we just stick to the left side here. We ignore completely everyone else. Unfortunately, someone manages to pull this aggro. I think maybe someone died here and had to respawn. And that's how they ended up pulling this aggro on the way back. But anyway, it's a nice quick wipe for this guy. Torch gets us through to the next phase. Now, if you run to the right here again, you don't have to pull this guy's aggro. I completely forgot, completely switched off and end up pulling his aggro. If you stick to the right hand side there, you don't pull the aggro. Then we'd like to run up the left stairs. You can run up the right stairs. It's a little bit faster, but the archer can sometimes be a bit of a pain. But what we're basically doing here is running up the left hand stairs and then we're going to use a rock on the right to... Um, to lose the aggro of these guys, to speed up the run a little bit. But what's important is your torch user will get hit and obviously can't defend themselves. So the rest of the team need to use stuns, need to get aggro to basically make it free. So you can see here, we're trying to protect Galena walking up the stairs. And then we come down here and we're going to jump over this and we're basically going to sit on these rocks. Now you can see here, do I actually get out of this? No, I have to unstuck. So if you go too far to the right here, you get stuck. So you've got to go to your map. You've got to go to menu, unstuck, and you'll unstuck back to the rocks. When you try and jump, when you jump down, try and stick a little bit to the left. Just don't hug the wall too much, and you shouldn't get in that stuck position. That's absolutely fine. Doesn't cause us too much of lost time here. I end up getting the prowler's aggro back. I think on the retreat. No, I don't because he's retreating, so you can't actually do that. Ignore me. Um, but this point is a much better jump. There you go. And we've already lost all the aggro, so we'll kind of come in. I'm going to do a bit of PVE in at the moment. Pull these guys aggro, ignore the hive on the left-hand side and ignore the archer on the stairs because he's already dead earlier, so we shouldn't need to kill him again. These guys, these three can put out a lot of damage if your healer's not on point. Luckily, I had to get my sword and shield out there and the healer did a good job putting the sacred ground underneath me. Tank the explosion from that guy. Take the stance to keep their aggro. At this point now, we can just do some damage. We've left the boss up the top and we've left the hive on the left hand side. You want to take this fight here. If you start going left, you're going to risk pulling the hive and that's just going to cost you, cause you issues, cost you time. Straight over, we'd like to take the fight over there if possible. Because again, we don't have to worry about dispute disrupting the hive there. And heavy attacks are good here because you can see he's got a yellow stamina bar. So again, if you can deplete that yellow stamina bar, you're going to be able to get him on his knee and do big DPS. You can iframe him through his attacks quite easily. He's the same model as some of the other bosses we've faced in this run already, so it's quite easy. Once you've done this dungeon quite a few times, you'll absolutely know their attack patterns, and with the hatchet, you'll have Defy Death as well, which is a bit of a get-out-of-jail-free card. Kill him nice and quick. 
Archer's up next. We need to kill this archer. Luckily, he comes out to us. That's fine. We're just going to left click him down here. And this archer's a pain because he's going to be able to block you getting the next chest. And he can do some quite big damage if you pull him during the boss phase because, yeah, archer in the back is no fun at all. So ideally, you kind of don't have that happen. Luckily, I don't get rooted, but I do get slowed. We open up the chest. I don't think I've got anything good on this whole run. But then you've got the two mini bosses down here. You've got the mini boss on the left and the mini boss on the right. We're going to leave the mini boss on the right for now. We're going to deal with the mini boss on the left. And you might ask, why do we focus on the left first? Well, we focus on the left first because it's an archer, I think, if I remember correctly. And this guy, yeah, it's an archer. Again, can do big damage and he can attack you with range. So even if you're fighting the mini boss on the right as you first enter, if this guy pulls ag if someone pulls aggro on this guy, you're going to have a hard time because he's going to be hitting you for big damage. Whereas when you go to the left, you can aggro him relatively carefree. Now, the reason we run to the left wall here is because you saw that archer was getting further and further over to the right, almost in the distance of where we'd aggro the other guy. We're just trying to pull him back here. So you line of sight him behind this wall. He'll have to come to you to try and hit you. There you go. So he runs up here. Now we're absolutely safe to fight. So nice big damage. Again, what I should do is I should get around the other side of him. Because if I get around the other side of him, he'll do the I'm reverse jump and he'll do the reverse twice. jump in a way that we can manage, in a way that I want him to go. So you can actually physically maneuver these guys just by your positioning. And it's really, so here I go. So I make, I go, right. And now you can see he jumps that way. And him jumping this way is absolutely fine. Not a problem for us at all. This is what you need to do throughout the whole dungeon when it comes to these guys. Um, he takes a little bit of time to kill, as I say, because he's annoying. We're going to aggro that guy. We like to aggro, we like to kill this guy here. I mean, this is my team strat. I don't think it's particularly necessary. I think you'd absolutely do that. You can. There is a strat, a, a speedrun strat with this guy where you pull him onto the bridge where the boss is. And when you pull him onto the bridge where the boss is, you can gravity well him off the bridge um, and basically kill him nice and quick. I actually think as long as everyone's committed to it, you can just deep burn this guy down about as fast as faffing around with grav well. I think if you wanted a world record speed run, you probably have to do the grab oh, yeah, roll yeah, strap, yeah, but no, just I, I the run we were doing, it wasn't that necessary. So I was just like, right, let's just kill the guy. Then we'll go back and loot the chest, although I get encumbered, which is always worth doing. When you do these M10s, if you get encumbered, um, it can be a real problem, especially if there's more mobs around you, because you're going to have to start solving it. So what you should do before you try and do potentially a, a stack of M10s is you should... Um, Try and get, especially now with the kind of the global storage system that we've got in the game, just take one of your empty storage settlements, dump all of your rubbish in there and sort it out another day. Because there's nothing worse than being encumbered in the dungeon, especially if your team gets let down around you because you you can't join them in the fight and they need a lot of help. Really frustrating. Um, but yeah, if you're, if you're a really good tank and you're comfortable iframing, you can play in the boss's face or if you need to activate refresh your move or something. But other than that, just keep your aggro here. See, I've got aggro. He'll do this slam attack. Every time he does a slam attack, you want to dodge to the right. It will completely break your stamina if you don't do that. And if you don't have your shield up for whatever reason, it will do huge damage to you. He spits these blue, these sorry, these green balls out. They'll leave poison around, which is if you step in it, it's going to kind of leech you. You can see here he does the slam attack quite a lot. This is fine. I'm playing with enough distance here that I can read that. You saw he threw out some little stones. Those little stones inflict disease, which is going to reduce healing on you. And then every now and again, he'll pick a random target, normally someone at range, and he'll apply that kind of big green laser to them. That green laser means when that person stops in about three seconds, they'll apply a poison well. You can yeah, see that poison well on the right hand side of the screen there, on the left hand side now. Um, as the boss does this maneuver, two, two mobs will spawn, you need to burn those mobs down quickly, get the aggro back here if you don't have it already, and then just sit tight. He's going to repeat the same attacks here the slam, the swipes the stones, the poison balls. So at this point, you've got it all covered. You see there he's thrown a rock down. The rock's important, of course, because you need to stand behind those to avoid the wipe mechanic. I guess at this point, if you're doing M10, you know how to do Genesis. If you use an ice pylon, unfortunately, the rock kind of sinks down. So to deal with that, you're going to have to lie behind it, not just stand behind it if you don't want to get wiped. You see here, the boss also did a breath attack. The breath attack also does quite a lot of damage. It doesn't do any damage to you if you're right next to the boss. Because the kind of breath attack goes over you. And if you're distance, you will affect it. And it's not too bad just to stamina with it. And when the boss does this move, so when it throws its arms up in the air, if you've got your hatchet out, you can actually infect it from a disease throw and cause a little bit of extra damage there, which is kind of something for nothing, especially if you've got Keenly Jagged on, you might proc some extra bleed as well. I wouldn't recommend left-clicking it, because sometimes when it goes down, the animation where it goes down actually causes a bit of damage. This is the boss's wipe mechanic now. 
What you want is the boss to stop right next to a rock, ideally, because then you can get in some extra DPS if you're looking for a bit of extra DPS. But as long as you're standing behind that rock and you block that attack, um, you're not going to take any damage. You can see there are iframe for all the attacks, which is fine, but now I've lost all my stamina, so now I need to get my shield back out, which is sometimes what happens, but it's fine. The boss at this point is now um, aggroing someone else so I can actually get on with it. Watch out for the rock attack. When the boss throws a rock attack, you'll see these kind of green lines around you. That's where the rock is going to land, and you need to get out of that radius to be able to make sure you don't get hit. So you can see here, I think this is the easiest boss to tank in the whole game. I really do. And as long as you don't get too greedy, this boss is difficult if you get a little bit greedy, but we burn it down so quickly. We have good DPS. We take the shards. That's a quick gold. What was that? Like an 18 minute run, I think we managed to get that in in total. You don't see the score because I skipped for it. But yeah, that's a nice quick M10 run. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like watching this kind of content and you like watching speed runs, I do do it on my Twitch as well. So make sure you follow in the Twitch link below. If you've enjoyed this video and it's been helpful to you, make sure you like and subscribe. Any speed skips that you know of that I've missed, you can let me know in the comment section below or you can join my Discord and let me know. Discord link in the description below. That would be massively appreciated. Uh, but until next time, everyone, stay safe, keep rocking.